Hello, I'm Steve Olson, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Transportation District 5. During this video, we're going to introduce you to Central Florida's newest way to get around. It's called SunRail. SunRail will be open to the public by May 2014. But in the meantime, we're doing a lot to prepare for our opening day and the ongoing operations of this exciting new commuter rail line. And we're doing a lot to get ready for you, our customers. So what exactly is SunRail? Well, SunRail is a new commuter rail line being developed for Central Florida. When it's fully built out in 2016, it'll run from DeLand in Volusia County to Point Siena in Osceola County. It'll be 61 miles from beginning to end. SunRail is being built in phases. Phase one goes from DeBerry in Volusia County to Sand Lake Road in Orange County. It goes into operation in May 2014. There'll be 12 stations, some of which are under construction right now. The stations will be at DeBerry, Sanford, Lake Mary, Longwood, Altamont Springs, Maitland, Winter Park, Florida Hospital, Lynx Central Station, Church Street, Orlando Amtrak, and Sand Lake Road. All of these stations will be open and fully operational by May 2014. The Phase 1 segment of SunRail is 32 miles long. In 2016, SunRail will open Phase 2. In Phase 2, we are going to expand north to DeLand from DeBerry and south to Point Siena from Sand Lake Road. These new stations will be constructed in Volusia, Orange, and Osceola counties. In Volusia, we'll be going to the historic Amtrak station in DeLand. In Orange County, we will build a new station at Meadowoods. In Osceola County, we will be building three new stations at Osceola Parkway, Kissimmee Amtrak, and finally, Point Siena. We're adding about 30 miles to complete the entire segment. Ample parking will be available at all of the stations, except for our urban destination stations in Winter Park, Florida Hospital, Lynx Central Station, Church Street, and Orlando Amtrak. But all of our stations will be ADA accessible. I'm gonna come back a little later and give you a detailed update on construction activities. But first, let's take a look at the trains. First, there are three parts to the trains, locomotives, coach cars, and cab cars. When you put them together, you have a train set. The locomotive powers the train. Passengers ride in both the coach and cab car, but the cab car is unique because it also includes a second set of controls called a cab. You see, our trains are using something called push-pull technology. This means that when the train is traveling in one direction, the engineer sits in the locomotive and controls the train from there. This is when the locomotive is pulling the train down the tracks. When the train gets to the end of the line, rather than turning it around, the engineer gets out and walks to the cab car and uses the alternate controls to drive the train back up the tracks. This is when the locomotive pushes the train. The locomotives are being built by Motive Power in Boise, Idaho. And when they're finished, they're gonna look like this. The outside of the trains will be beautiful and painted in a way to reflect the sunrail colors and the character of Central Florida. Bright, engaging, and energetic. The locomotives are going to look like something from the future. Kids and adults alike will be thrilled to see these beautiful, powerful locomotives moving down the sunrail corridor. SunRail has ordered locomotives with a nose cone that will give them that futuristic look. Although the locomotives are capable of traveling up to speeds of 79 miles per hour, here on the SunRail corridor, the average speed is going to be about 45 miles per hour. Do you have a guess how much these locomotives weigh? They tip the scales at 289,000 pounds, or about 144 tons. And the cars, where the passengers will ride? They're going to be simply stunning. When you come into a SunRail car, you'll feel like you're stepping into the latest and greatest in passenger rail. Well, that's because you are. First, let's take a look inside the cars. We'll have tables where you can sit with your laptop and get started on work, read the paper, or let the kids draw. To make it even easier, we'll have free Wi-Fi on board. Need to plug in while you're on the train? SunRail's got you covered. You'll be able to surf the web or even answer a few emails before you get to work. Why not order a pizza while on the train so that it arrives a few minutes after you get home? You'll be able to do all of that and more on SunRail. And 
Central Florida will get a peek at the train sets in the latter part of 2013 when they go through a commissioning process. That's a fancy way of saying that we're taking them out for a test drive to make sure we got everything that we ordered. So if you see us out on the corridor, give us a wave. So let's jump ahead to May 2014. How will Sunrail operate? How much will a ticket cost? And when will service be available? These are some of the questions that we get most often when we are out conducting outreach for Sunrail. The Sunrail trains will run on a peak service schedule every 30 minutes from 5.30 to 8.30 a.m. and from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. On the non-peak schedule, the trains will run every two hours. There will not be weekend service at this time, but special event trains will be available. Each Sunrail station will have ticket vending machines where you could purchase Sunrail tickets and monthly passes. They work a lot like an ATM. Our ticket vending machines will also be accessible for the disabled. You can buy weekly, monthly, or annual passes on Sunrail. You can also purchase a stored value pass, which you can refill when your balance gets low. It operates similarly to the ePass and SunPass toll transponders. You will also be able to buy one-way or round-trip Sunrail passes. A monthly pass on Sunrail is expected to cost as little as $56. That's about a 32% savings over buying one-way or round-trip tickets each day. It can also save you hundreds of dollars a month over commuting by car. That's a good deal, especially when you could sit back and let someone else do the driving for you. On top of that, seniors, persons with disabilities, and children between the ages of 7 and 18 qualify for a 50% discount on all Sunrail passes. If you don't buy a monthly pass, it'll cost $2 for a one-way pass with an extra dollar for each county line you cross. For example, if you ride from Winter Park to downtown Orlando, both in Orange County, you'll pay $2. A trip from Lake Mary in Seminole County to downtown Orlando in Orange County will cost $3. A trip from DeBerry in Volusia County to downtown Orlando in Orange County will cost $4. Remember, seniors, persons with disabilities, and children between the ages of 7 and 18 qualify for a 50% discount on all Sunrail passes. When you get ready to board the trains, there will be stationary readers on the station platforms. You simply tap your card on the reader and get on the train. It's as easy as tap and go. When you get to your destination, you do the same thing. Find the stationary reader and tap and go. Now it's time to change into my safety gear and we're off to a construction site. Construction is underway and it's happening in two major pieces. There's work occurring on the railroad right-of-way and at the station locations. The reason we divide it up this way is because anyone working on or near the tracks is required to have special training and certification. So we have one team that's building the new tracks and the station platforms which are adjacent to the tracks and in the rail right-of-way. This team is a joint venture made up of Archer Western and Railworks. The work on the stations is being done by two different companies. Archer Western is building seven of our 12 stations, and Wobro, a construction company here in Central Florida, is building the additional five stations. The station work involves building the canopies and the railings on the platform, the eventual sites of the station parking lots, and the landscaping. Rail construction consists primarily of adding a second set of tracks called double tracking. We are doing this throughout most of the corridor where there's only one track now. Our double tracking efforts are already underway, starting at Fort Florida Road in DeBerry on the north end of Phase 1. The first step in this process is to clear the land alongside the existing rail. We clear out the vegetation and make room for the new tracks. Following that, we bring in dirt, called subgrade, to bring the ground up to the same level as the existing tracks. We then build the track in sections, laying down the ties then placing the steel rails on top. A machine called a spiker drives the spikes, attaching the rails to the ties. Sections of the rail are welded together. We then lift the rail, put the ballast rocks under the tracks, and lay the tracks back down on top. 
Going along with the construction that's happening on the second set of tracks, crews are also out there upgrading the railroad crossings. They're adding the second set of tracks at the crossing and upgrading the signals too. The process of adding the second set of tracks at a crossing is similar to the double tracking work. A section of track is assembled on the shoulder of the roadway next to the tracks. Then the roadway at the crossing is torn out, the rocks and rails are laid in place, then the roadway is repaved and the concrete panel between the tracks is installed. Crews also install and repair any sidewalks that exist at the railroad crossings. At many crossings, we're also installing new pedestrian crossing gates at the sidewalk to remind pedestrians they need to stop for oncoming trains, the same as cars do. There are some instances where a crossing is the only way in and out of a development or a neighborhood. In those cases, our crews will only work on half the crossing at a time, making sure the other half is always open to traffic so residents can get in and out of their homes as they need to. Work on the rails will continue to move from north to south as we finalize our design plans and can get them into the hands of the crews that will build them. Most of the work at the stations is similar to building construction, with crews digging out the area where the platform will be built, pouring concrete footers that will serve as the platform's foundation, and then actually building the concrete structure of the platform. This work is all done adjacent to the railroad tracks, close enough so that SunRail riders will be able to easily step from the platform onto the train. The second major part of our work is called the station finishes. That's where we take a platform and turn it into a full-blown SunRail station. Our platforms will be covered by canopies to keep the sun and rain off our riders and have amenities like ticket vending machines, water fountains, passenger assist and emergency phones, audio and visual announcement systems, and closed circuit television cameras. Beyond the platforms, most of our stations will also have parking lots, bus, and kiss and ride lanes. Those are the lanes where passengers can be dropped off. There will also be lighting and landscaping. Another activity that's not construction but necessary to keep the rail corridor operating safely is maintenance. When FDOT bought the 61 and a half miles of track, we became responsible for the upkeep of the railroad. There are a lot of different maintenance activities going on continuously along the corridor. We are constantly inspecting the tracks and the signals to look for defects or potential problems so we can correct them before they become issues. Right now, our crews are looking at every crossing signal to make sure they are ready to withstand the lightning and power surges that come during our storm season. One ongoing maintenance activity is replacing old rotted railroad ties that are no longer effective. Another is tamping, a process of shaking up the ballast under the rails to make sure the rails are as straight as possible to make the ride more smooth and comfortable. So far, we've been discussing all the new and exciting parts about SunRail, but rail transportation is serious business. The train tracks are not toys and are not to be played with, jumped on, or in any way interfered with. Too many people lose their lives on the train tracks every year. We don't want to add to those grim statistics in Central Florida. FDOT takes part in Operation Lifesaver and has created its own safety initiative called SunRail is Safe Rail. Operation Lifesaver is a public rail safety education program that began in 1942 in Idaho. Since then, it's been adopted in all 50 states and has now become international, all in the interest of rail safety. The three main components of the Operation Lifesaver program are education, engineering, and enforcement. The education component includes presentations to driver's education students, school bus drivers, law enforcement, all grades in school, and civic organizations. It also includes the use of public service announcements, videos, and printed materials, such as brochures and posters. That's why we have Operation Lifesaver presenters available to make presentations to your group as part of our SunRail is Safe Rail program. The construction and operation of SunRail does not create new rail safety hazards, but it's opened the door for more discussion about safety around railroad tracks. According to the Operation Lifesaver website, about every three hours, a person or vehicle is hit by a train in this country. 
SunRail is Safe Rail is our campaign aimed at educating the public about how to stay safe on the rail. To date, the SunRail public involvement team has given hundreds of presentations to the public about rail safety. So what do you need to know to stay safe around SunRail? First, any time is train time. Any track may have a train running on it at any time. We should not become complacent and think that we know when the train will be coming down the tracks. Any train can be delayed for various reasons, and additional trains may be operating on the track. You know, it's up to pedestrians and drivers to always be looking and listening for trains. In an emergency situation, a train can't swerve. The engineer can apply the emergency brakes and he can sound the horn. Trains can stop, but not quickly. According to the National Safety Council, a lightweight passenger car traveling at 55 miles per hour can stop in about 200 feet in an emergency. An average freight train traveling at 55 miles per hour may take a mile or more to stop. If your car stalls or is stuck on the tracks, get out. Don't wait to see if a train is coming before you react. Immediately get out and get away from the vehicle. An approaching train may not give you or your passenger time to get to safety. Again, if a train is approaching, get yourself and passengers out immediately and run toward the train, but away from the track at a 45 degree angle. If you run in the same direction the train is traveling, you could be injured by the flying debris when the train hits your car. Train tracks are private property. People who do not have permission to be on a railroad property are trespassing. Thousands of people have made fatal mistakes on railroad property. Some did not expect a train. Some thought it would be on the other track. Some thought it was moving slower. And some thought it could stop for them. Remember, the only way to be safe is to stay off and stay away. Finally, if you see something on the tracks, or you see someone acting suspiciously, or you see a suspicious bag or package, say something. Call 911. Remember, SunRail is safe rail. For more information about SunRail, please visit our website at sunrail.com or call us at 1-855-RAIL-411. You can also follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook.